and welcome back to my nightmare. Acting tips with Joe Hartzler. I'm your host, I created this whole thing. Pay me. Today's acting tip. Be a celebrity, okay? If you are gonna be an actor, take it from me, the best sort of actor you can be is a celebrity. So if you're already famous, if you've got the huge bucks rolling in, you got people on the pay payroll, you're a household name, you might make a great actor. So think about, um, you know, don't audition, but uh, if someone offers you a movie role, take it because that pays a ton of money, okay? So if you're a celebrity, you be an actor, and if you wanna be a, a successful paid actor, be a celebrity, okay? So there it is, acting tip. Here's one of the frustrating things about acting, is that you have to call yourself an actor. And people say, what do you do? You let it slip, and then they roll, they roll their eyes. That's great. Whoa! Hello. Tara, geez. Yeah. What's going on? The who, what is, snuck right who are you talking to? Huh, don't worry about it. Do you have an appointment, or? An appointment, like you asked me to come over, so I came over Do kind of thing? You, okay, you know what? Our casting session hasn't yet begun, so if you want to just have a seat and fill out a uh, uh, release form, that would be great, okay? Okay. And there's an NDA there, a non-disclosure agreement. Another actor, okay. Well, I gotta go do this audition really quickly, so um, I'll be back with you guys in a second. But um, yeah, I guess be a celebrity, if anything. Don't be like, you know, Captain Dingbat over here. Tara Jepson, five foot, five inches. I am willing to eat food. What, what okay, am I? Any food allergies or anything weird like that? I am gluten intolerant. Okay, and... well, all right, that's enough. Have you ever been paid as an actor for an audition? No. Of course not. No. Right? No. That'd be absurd? That would be really crazy. I'm going to be, the, I'm the first casting director. I'm actually paying actors for auditions. So I'm going to give you $20 to be here. But we need you to choose as our actor auditioning today, which you will choose. Will this go towards lunch, gas, or shelter? So food, gas, or shelter. That's the game. Now write down on this. Right here, right down, hey. food, gas, or shelter. This is honestly going really, really good. And what have you chosen? Gas! You're getting $20, folks. Our actor, we're very excited, very, very, very excited to get to know this actor, Tara Jumson. Tara Jepson. Let's go to our interview right now. Ready? <claps> Didn't work, you try it. Oh. Give us a clap. Me? It's gonna take us to our interview. Oh. Tara. Yes. I'm pretty, I'm pretty cool. Yeah, very. Obviously. <laughs> You're you. the one with the show, right? Elaborate on that a little bit. Um, wow, okay, so I think you have a few things going for you. One, you have uh, your own show, which is a lot of people think is super cool. Wow. No matter what the quality don't flatter is. Me. Don't flatter me, don't flatter me, don't flatter me. You just asked me to. Acting. <sighs> yeah. How bad does that suck? Acting? How bad is it? I don't know. I think it's pretty fun. It's a mm. really silly job. So I think if you get away with having that as your job. You know, one time uh, they offered me a couple, uh, you know, like a hundred bucks or something. They said, uh, hey, we got this acting gig for you. And then uh, I came in, they said, uh, cover your face in uh, wing sauce and ranch dressing. And I did. And then it was on there all day. Yeah. Was it worth it? No. Huh. So the real figure is probably lower than you. But you got to put uh, actor gas in your actor tank, don't you? Yeah, you do. So sometimes you got to cover your face in f***ing hot wing sauce. Okay, let me get to cut right to the chase here. Mm -hmm. You know, this morning I, was, I got uh, riled up. I was having my coffee mm -hmm. and my oatmeal. Yeah. Clack, 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 clack. You know what it is? What? Neighborhood skate crew. Oh, oh, yeah. These punks skating by. Ooh, really? I, th I threw my coffee in one kid's face. Do you, did you do that because they think they're better than you? Because they're or? skate dicks. Oh, yeah. I see a skateboarder going by. I say, stop. What do you, you know? Yeah, what's yeah. A, what, are these, what are these dirt bags up to? Skateboarding? What? Exactly my point. It's a crime. And, and that's offensive. What, are these, what tip are these losers on? 
Um, skateboarding? Exactly. Get a job. Shouldn't they be working if, all the time? Well, you could go to a tennis court and say get a job, too. I mean, everybody, like, recreates at some point, right? You telling me tennis is like skateboarding? Tennis is a... The queen goes to the tennis, and you can't say a word. Shh. Right. Wimbledon. I, I don't tend to hear you putting the queen as your sort of, like, reference point for how to live, though. Is she? I mean, who do you go by, Jesus? I go by the queen. I don't know. I guess I never sat and thought about who my reference point is. Um, maybe, I don't know, like Angela Davis or someone. Somebody interesting. Angela. Don't hurt yourself trying to figure that out. Just Lansbury. Google later. Angela Lansbury is also. Murder she wrote about. Mm-hmm. Stops a little before that, but yes. Do you think a person's morality could be derived from a multitude of sources and that maybe many sources are derivative of each other, like uh, eventually way back, uh, that maybe uh, all books, all movies, all television show throughout, there's some consistent morality that relates to all humanity in a bigger way than just Jesus or Mother Angela? You mean just like people have kids and teach them their ways and then they have kids and teach them? I mean, that's... Wait, what is your point? You're you asking go, about, you go out on a lot of auditions? Um, no. Good for you. Yeah. I mean, I, I would if I even knew how to get that kind of stuff, but I don't. I, really? I, well, I have, I have an Actors Access account, and I get their emails. I usually delete them before I look at them. you got to get an agent. Oh, you get an agent first? I mean... But based on what? You can't sit there looking at Actors Access all day. You'll go crazy. True. That's what the casting directors do. That's what the agents do. Yeah, but I don't have anything to make an agent want to work with me. What? I, I mean... You got a face, kid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they took people with faces... People with faces are who buy stuff. Well, that's true. That's true. But also, I feel like people have to... You have to do a little stuff with your face before they'll take you on. How long... You have long... to be putting your face out there. Sure, you got to get your actor face out there. How long have you been in an actor face? Um, I have been an actor face. I like this performance art count. If I was you did perform performance art? Yeah, for a really long time. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Tell that again, but just less. Like, pretend you're a real person, like, doing your performance art. Good. Say it again. I did performance art. That was worse. Okay, just tell me the story. Um, when I was in college, I just got interested in performance as a medium for art making. Um... Is that, are you actually writing something? You can't, do you need me to open that for oh, you? Oh, there's a lunch order going around. There is, from... But I want you to, I want to hear, uh, you said you did uh, the trapeze or something? No, uh, what I said was, I, when I was in college, I got really interested in uh, performance as a medium for working with ideas, and um, well, there were a lot of people who I thought did interesting work that way. A lot of the guys are getting sushi. It's Friday. What guys? Huh? It's Fish Friday. A lot of people get fish on Friday. Because this is like a of their Christian beliefs. area, or what? Oh, yeah. A lot of Catholics on your staff. Deeply Catholic staff. That's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Is that? Do you go to? Is there a special website to hire? One Catholics? of these guys is auditioning to be a, a cardinal. He's been in training for years. So I just did a lot of like I was really into feminist performance art, and I I I went out. I did that at open mics. I mean, if people are already doing poetry, they don't want to see performance art less than po Well, they might, but still. And so that sort of bled into acting, I guess, as like people I knew and liked started doing more mainstream stuff. I became willing to do that. I didn't. I didn't say what. I, you're on your phone right now. Ooh, okay. Um, Let me read a tweet because I noticed that you're on Twitter. I am. This is from Captain Dingbat on Twitter. I know so many rich kids. I know so many more rich kids now than I did before moving to L.A. I still find most common ground with working class queer punks. I really wish I hadn't written the three dumbest things I've ever written right before I came here on Twitter. What do you mean? Um, by that tweet or by what I just said? By that tweet. I guess that I find with people who help each other, it seems like people who are punks are more inclined to share their resources. That's what I've noticed with time. And not even just queer punk. Actually, that part I could take out. I could actually just say people I've known from the queer scene over time have been mixed and people with the 
from the punk scene, I find that we're all much more readily help each other, much more readily share our resources with each other. Interesting. Do you think you're a punk? Uh, always have been. God, you know what it reminds me of? What? These freaking skate dicks that rolled by Ooh. this morning when I was eating my freaking... I was eating my coffee, drinking my oatmeal, mm-hmm. coughing up a storm, because that's not how you do it. Yeah, yeah. These freaking skate dicks roll by, like... Threatening you. Oh, they probably had bags of weed. I Might should have, have tackled one. You think I should have tackled one? Or? I wouldn't do that. I think that then you end up probably getting hurt. If you're willing to get hurt for your oh weed, God. hurt by someone who hasn't done anything to you, what? I guess. What did they do to you? They're skateboarders. They're skate punks. Right. But what does that what does that mean to you? These Why pun- do you even care? Why? Why do I? Why do you care what they're if they're skateboarding punks have yeah. weed or any of that? Why do I care? Yeah. A um, memory, a uh, memory. <gasps> that reminds me of the saddest story ever told. Oh yeah. Maybe, Are you just inserting a segue here, or maybe? It has to do with the root of my aggression towards skateboarders. And that's the reason I want to harass them or step in their way when they're skateboarding past or try to tackle them or stop them. Skateboards clacking. Maybe it's because... I was once a skateboarder. I'm not totally there with you yet, but I'm willing to keep listening. Last year, I was a skateboarder. And I still do it sometimes. But last year, I took some of my actor money and I I took a month and I, I built a, a skateboarding ramp. The most beautiful ramp ever built, they say. Where is it? And the legend grew about this ramp as, uh, as the construction went on. And people would peer over their fences to see. They would say, what's he building? What's he toiling away on? Night and day. 28 piers in the ground. Leveling it. I leveled it all with a, on a string level. And I constructed it. Three giant pieces. You know how you do flat bottom, transition sides. Mm-hmm. I carried them in place. The skeletons of this ramp, the greatest, they say the greatest ramp, the most beautiful ramp ever built. Yeah. I carried that skeleton, hand hewn, and transported it to behind the very spot where we sit. I tell you, I, I swear it's true. Don't disbelieve me when I say, not. Five feet away from There's where no we way sit that's true. Is, a, is the most beautiful ramp ever built. And I had a limited space, so the ramp is 93 inches wide, which is seven and a half feet, I think. The width was perfect, three and a half feet tall, a beautiful transition. I carved the transition twice because I didn't think the first one was steep enough, so I made the second one fast. The coping, f- a five inch piece of. Uh, what is it? Schedule 40. What? Steel pipe. Really? Cut it myself with a hacksaw. I drilled the holes. I countersunk the screws. And then, because I wasn't finished, I applied the smoothest surface known to any skate ramp. Masonite. You have to countersink all the, the screw heads to get masonite to go on, right? But you know about masonite, don't you? The sun doth corrupt. The rains. Thank you for being on the show for auditioning. You, (laughs) I appreciate it. The rains do corrupt masonite. The sun did come. And the rains did corrupt that masonite. Before I even really got the chance to skate it. Because before the last screw drilled, before the last nail laid, before the last board jimmied in there, neighbor lady got pissed. Really? Yeah, she yelled at me. 
for I hadn't what? even skated it. I dropped in for the first time, and she said, you can't do this. You should have built it somewhere else. <laughs> so now I got bad vibes where the be most beautiful ramp ever built is. And she says, uh, she says, we have babies back here. Fuck. And she meant her dogs. <laughs> That's what she meant. And I insulated the back of the ramp, the back of the transition. I insulated it and then sealed it to further deaden the sound. But it was to no avail. The bad vibes persisted. <laughs> what do you and I both know about skateboarding? That it's the best thing in the world. And it cannot exist where there are bad vibes. So maybe that's what the heart of my aggression is. What do you think? Um, I don't think we got there, but you're probably on your way. Yeah. You know, I honestly wanted to bring you on the show because I'm like, this is like someone that like, uh, I want my nieces to look up to. I was like, that's so cool. Who's a badass? When did you start skateboarding? When I was 36 years old. That's amazing. That's amazing. So many people give up and I've seen you shred and uh, you're good. Thank you. Yeah. How'd you drop in for the first time? At Pacifica, at the Pacifica Skate Park with people like like holding like holding people's arms and stuff and then I tried it at Scott's Valley because there's a mini bowl there uh -huh. near Santa Cruz and instead of doing the thing of leaning back and falling on my butt I overcommitted and just fell on my wrists constantly totally yeah. just like Rod and Todd in the Simpsons like breaking yeah. I didn't break anything but I just kept falling forward Oh. But I really wanted to always be able to drop in because you really can't get in the session if you can't drop in. You gotta drop in, kids. Just do. Any advice for someone uh, out there who's maybe afraid to drop in? Uh huh. My my advice is accept that you're gonna get hurt. Accept that you're gonna get hurt. And do it anyway. Because you know what I've heard from some people. I've heard them say, you know, I tried it, but I fell down and uh, uh, I got hurt, so I quit. Yeah, and then I say it's probably not for you. If you would give up that quickly. Do you have any acting tips? Um, acting tips. My acting tip is be fearless. <laughs> Here's my tip. Be a celebrity. Ooh. Because um, I find it's a shortcut. Even, I mean, be fearless is fine, but it, be a celebrity first because fearless is not, again, you know. That'll yeah. get you to drop in, but that's not going to pay you. That, you got to be a celebrity if you want to get paid. But it's... But it's hard to be a celebrity. Here's my other acting tip. When they, when they ask you to say the slate, mm -hmm. give a little wave. What does that do for you? Sets you apart. Hi, Joe Hartzler. And what part sets you apart? The wave? The little wave. Somebody gave me that tip once. Try it. Really? Tar Jepsen. Tar Jepsen. Great. Just be sincere like you're giving a handshake. Hey, Joe Hartzler. Tar Jepsen. Great, but like rehearse it a million times, okay? So when you go in there, uh -huh. you're ready to say your own name. Um, Tar Jepsen. Great, now be fearless. Tar Jepsen. Mm, I like the first way better, so. Tar Jepsen. There you go. So wait, I did or I didn't book it? No, no, you didn't. Well, you, you didn't book it. Because I did something wrong? No, 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 you were great. Well, we're going to send this. Look, no decisions have been made. You know, producers might see this and who knows where this will go. And I might, you know, get some of this footage out there to try to promote you, try to get that actor face out there. Like, look, Tara, she can shreds. She could uh, eat some Wheaties and say, you know, good morning. I did audition for an REI commercial. You should book A it. print ad. Should we go skate? Yeah, let's go skate. Let's go shred. Let's get out of here. This place sucks. Congratulations. <laughs> Busy day. How glorious thanks to see the Jones. If you see me out by the lake, don't be fake. Peace. You know 
I'll be selling moon. You were gonna get $20 for your gas money. You gotta pay people for that. You gotta put gas in your hand. Act your gas tank. Yes, dude. What's your. Put in your. Then money. If you see. And any message of uh, hope for future shredders? Come join me.